Hey everyone, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. Today we have a great video for you. We're going to be at the InterSolar uh, Expo in San Diego, California. This is one of the biggest events that occur in California and what's really nice about this event is that we don't just see new solar technology but we are going to see a lot of new storage technology that's coming to market. We're going to be taking you through in different parts of this expo so that way you get to really enjoy and see all the new solar and storage technology coming to market. So let's welcome you to the Inter Solar Expo. Hey everyone, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies and I'm meeting with Eric over at Panasonic. They have a new battery storage solution coming out that I think is worth your attention. So I'm going to pass it on to Eric. He's going to give you a little information about himself and the company and then we're going to get into the battery. Sure, thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I think Panasonic needs no introduction. A 101 year old company. I've uh, been in batteries for many, many, many decades and the newest product out of that realm is our energy storage system, uh, specifically designed for residential applications. Right here behind me, we're branding it the Evergold, and as a like single solution, perhaps one of the most flexible on the market. Okay. We can be in AC coupled situations, DC coupled situations, on grid, off grid, and everywhere in between. So you said AC coupled solutions, so that means this can be retrofitted, correct? Yeah. Okay, that's not something that we're seeing a lot of adaption in the market right now. Currently, I only know zone in as an AC coupled solution. So what is allowing this to be AC coupled? Is it this inverter right here that Panasonic has? Yeah, so our inverter that's part of the energy storage system is a grid forming inverter. Okay. So it doesn't replicate the grid. It can operate off grid. All right. So with that, we have the ability to provide power to a grid tied inverter that would otherwise go down when the grid goes down. All right. Hence the AC coupling. Nice. How big of a solar system could be retrofitted to it? Like a six kilowatt, seven, ten? Yeah, so we're in development to allow the size to increase. Right now, we're at about five or six kilowatts. Okay, that's not bad. Um, but again, in development uh, to allow you to, to exceed that mark. Now, can you have dual? Can you do a little bit of AC and a little bit of DC, or is it one or the other right now? You could probably do both, but they would sit in parallel with one another. Yeah. They wouldn't necessarily interact, but certainly you could do both. Oh, nice. So what's the storage capacity? Because this thing's, this thing's pretty tall. I'm, I'm yeah. about 5'10". You look a little yeah. taller than me. Yeah, so we're on a little um, bit of a yeah, and you got a little bit of stand. So, yeah. um, how many batteries are going to be housed in this big boy? As many as six. Oh, okay, nice. Yep. Yeah, and with about two point eight six kilowatt hours of usable energy in each battery. Nice. You can get about up to seventeen point one kilowatt hours okay. of usable energy in this one cabinet. Are they the Panasonic DCB one hundred five batteries? Nice. Are. Those are some great batteries. <laughs> yeah. Love them. So are they going to feature that 10-year warranty on them as well? Correct, yeah, 10 years or megawatt hour throughput. Okay, are you pushing over 40 on a full stack of all six batteries, like 40 megawatt hours? or? Uh, so each battery would be warranted in addition. Oh, okay, cool, yeah. that works, yeah, that, that's a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then have you gotten the energy monitoring system kind of figured out yet? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. On both mobile and desktop platforms, okay. we have installer and homeowner facing views. Awesome. Yeah. Now, I got a question about the inverter. If we go over to this, this sure. is pretty cool. I like this little cabinet that looks like it opens. But yep. So this is AC, DC coupled on off grid. So we got emergency backup power, I'm guessing. Yep. And um, is there a critical load circuit already built into it or do we need to have an external ATS? 
Yeah, so it depends. Okay. Uh, we're looking at right now at our DC coupled version. The black face of both units gives yeah. that away. If you see our banner over oh, here, yeah, okay. the yeah. white face gives away the AC coupled configuration. Nice. So let's talk DC for a minute. Okay. With one inverter, yes, you would need a critical loads panel that is not integrated into this inverter. However, it does have an ATS. All right. Nice. All right. So now, 50 amps or? I didn't have to get that reading. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't have that off the top of my head. Okay. Uh, I did want to add, though, that you can stack up to three of these DC coupled inverters, Whoa. which allows you to, to switch an entire. Wow, yeah. I mean, that's a lot of... So, so you can you can do them all in parallel then? With yes. How many storage batteries or storage systems can you connect to this one? Sure. So each inverter can have up to two cabinets. Okay. With three inverters, you now have six cabinets, which gives you a little bit over 100 kilowatt hours of usable energy. Yeah, I don't know a lot of people that need that, but with the electric vehicle market... I don't know a lot of people afford it. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely. It's totally all about capable. money, too. Yeah. So. Budget's always a concern. Yeah, do you plan on having generator integration with Already this done. System? Oh, wow. Both okay. AC coupled and DC coupled versions can already manipulate a generator. Oh, wow. Um, and it has auto start, I'm guessing. And then, yes, two wire start to your normal okay. to your normal uh, generator auto yeah. start. Um, so a smaller mobile generator, not a big 22 or something. No, yeah, this is a, a standby okay. uh, generator that would be triggered otherwise by a, a transfer switch. Okay, nice. Um, is there anything else worth noting now? Does this system have optimizers for rapid shutdown or anything no, like that? No, it does yet? not. We're agnostic, so as okay. long as your optimizer product provider is okay working within our system, we're okay with it. Okay, so Tygo would probably be the default. That's one of the, the more predominant names that you get coupled with our system. Okay. Same thing for rapid shutdown if you're in a territory yeah. that requires rapid shutdown. It's pretty big in California. Yeah, and out east where I'm from, Massachusetts, it's very big. Oh, is it? Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Fair enough. So yeah. you could technically, because I know LG was trying to work on an ESS solution, and then sure. they kind of, nothing really happened. I went to the, the intro for that. I got to go to a little private meeting on that. Sure. It was really cool. I bet. But um, this seems a lot better. Like, it's been thought out, and it looks like you're going to be able to implement it, because it didn't look like LG was going to be able to implement their sure. solution. Um, I haven't paid a ton of attention. I'll take your uh, word for it, enough, and I'm yeah. not disappointed to hear that, certainly. Uh, but yeah, this is a very well thought out product. It's also not brand new. We're in partnership bringing this product to market uh, with some other experts. So this is something that's already been through the ringer and all the bugs have already been worked out. We can get premium Panasonic modules, get a Panasonic converter, Panasonic battery storage system, you got to just deal with one manufacturer. I mean, that's what the ideal system is. You're starting to get the theme. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Good well, theme. it's been a pleasure, Eric. Absolutely. Thank you. Hey, everyone. We're at the Jinko Solar Exhibit. They have a huge exhibit here, and for good reason. We've installed a lot of their panels in the past, and we've done some interviews with them previously as well. Jinko Solar is currently in the process of building a facility here in the United States to manufacture their solar panels. Speaking of solar panels, they have two. So this one right here is their 72. It's a commercial module. It's bifacial and it's a half cell. So what that means is that they're able to improve the efficiency of the module. So right here, that's one cell, that's a half a cell. Instead of just big square, it's this small square right here. And they've relocated where the junction boxes are on the rear. But this module right now is pushing up to 410 watts with over 20% efficiency. That's amazing, that, that's phenomenal. And I know these panels are very affordable because they're manufactured by Jinko Solar. And they own the entire process when it comes to producing a solar module from mining the ingots to manufacturing the cells themselves to assembling the panels no one else in the industry can do that so that obviously keeps the cost down so this is great for commercial but let's look at a residential panel So right here, we have a traditional 60 cell panel. This one is gonna produce up to 335 watts of energy, and it's pushing just under 20% efficiency. So that's great. What's even better is this right here. It's end phase, has end phase microinverters built right into it. So that's less work for the installers up on the roof, and that ensures that you're getting your 25 year warranty out of this module. Again, 
half cell technology. So we're getting a half cell instead of one big cell. That means there's 120 of these. Now, if the cameraman will come to the back, we can see the junction boxes on the rear. So here's this microinverter right here. So you have this, these junction boxes. That's where all the energy from these cells on the other side are coming around. And then, bam, you got your microinverter. Phenomenal. These modules have been field, pro field proven for over 30 years. They know they're going to last. We know they're going to last. And they come in at an affordable price to keep your energy saving you money. Hey everyone, so we're here at the Iron Ridge booth and what they have on display is what we use on a regular basis, knockout tiles. And they are a phenomenal product. So I'm interviewing with Teresa with Iron Ridge and she's going to give you a little information about herself and the company and the value of this knockout tile. So you're hearing it from the horse's mouth. So, Teresa. Hi, I'm Teresa. I'm the marketing operations manager at Iron Ridge. Uh, we've recently been acquired actually by a Dutch company called Esdeg. Okay. And we are in a family of companies now with Quick Mount and EcoFacet. Yes. So it's a large racking group. Um, we're really excited to bring the best products and the widest portfolio of products to the U.S. Yeah, we used Quick Mount PV for okay. many years until you came out with this phenomenal product. Yeah. So do you want to tell us a little about it? Yeah, absolutely. So this is our knockout out tile product. It is a tile replacement mount. Um, so when you're doing a tile roof, you know, you can often have tiles that break on the roof. Uh, you have to replace them. Um, but with this, the flashing itself that we use actually replaces the tile. It blends in seamlessly. Uh, we have it in multiple curvatures. So right. if you're using an S tile, if you're using a W tile, or if you're using a flat tile, we have those options. And what you do is actually very innovative. I, you know, I'm sad that I can't show you right here. Uh, but well, well I'll, I'll pull up the video so everybody can yeah. see it. So you can see the knockout demonstration straight from Iron Ridge. Right, right, exactly. But what there basically is, is that there's a base underneath here. And then you put the flashing, which is, you know, completely in just a flat flashing on top of it. And what you do is you put the elephant on top and you knock it through with a hammer or a mallet. Um, and that's going to create the hole. It's going to create the penetration point through the tile. And create a watertight seal. And it creates a watertight seal because it creates this cone. And you can, if you saw this, you would see that there's a cone underneath yeah, that okay. encapsulates. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And um, I believe one hook, sent, in typical systems, you have to do two penetrations, sometimes right, three. Right. So this is a lot less penetrations on the roof, which in turn means less probabilities of a roof leak. And also, since the offset is so short that it, I think it holds up to like 500 pounds, it's yeah. ridiculous. So, yeah. I mean, a ton of weight. And, yeah, a, a solar system doesn't even weigh that much. So uh, the amount of force that that can hold is amazing. Yep. Now, uh, you have your racking on display here. Right, so this is our tilt mount system. Um, so this is the rail system that we use. It's the XR rail system. You can see that there's a curved profile to this rail. Um, so it re resists twisting and has a lot of strength because of that. It's okay. not a box. Um, but I think what you wanted to see was how the we clamp, right? Yeah. So this is our traditional clamp right here, which is, as you can see, the UFO. It's very cool. It's one size fits all and you just drive it down, but it does leave this little edge, right? You can see it on the edge of the, the rail. But if you want a really clean edge off of the module and you do not, you want to just cut the rail there, you're going to use the camo, which is, you'll have to see underneath. But it goes underneath, it fits into the rail slot, and you just slot it into place. Right. And it'll bite into the under module flange right there. Because it's grounding the panel. Underneath. Exactly. Yeah. So it'll ground the panel. It is also one size. And then we can just cut this and then you just seam it. Exactly. And then I it mean, looks clean. It's so clean. I think you guys were the first to do it. Now everybody's trying to copy yeah. it, you know? But I, from my understanding, no one's really implemented it as well as Iron Ridge. Thank you. Yeah, so. we're very excited. We have a great products team, and they oh, come yeah. out with, with excellent products. Absolutely. We love it. Uh, keep innovating. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate your time. Yeah, it was so nice meeting you. Yeah, nice meeting you.
everyone, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. But I'm with Energy Port, and I'm going to be talking to Bobby about their commercial product right here on display. And then also, they have a residential energy storage solution that I'll be displaying on the website as well. So, Bobby, tell us a little bit about this evolution of the battery system. This cool looking battery? Okay. This is our commercial industrial unit. Okay. This is a 60 kilowatt hour. 30 kilowatt system. So oh, this is wow. our inverter. Huge. Oh, inverter's right over there. Your inverter's okay. right here, right? All right. Then you can plug it, you can put it on this either side of the wall of the cabinet. Okay. So you can hang it, right? So this is what this is basically the size of 30 and then 60 kilowatt hour. Okay. Yeah, this is basically like our building block. So this, and then you can you add more to this? Absolutely. Okay. You can just put it on parallel. So 60 kilowatt hours, how much is each one of these LFP cells? Well, these are total, we have eight blocks, eight of them okay. total in one tray. So you got 56 batteries. Wow. That's yeah. And then you have our controller here. Yeah, so we got the whole BMS system down below. Right. Yeah. They're all LFP. What are we looking at in regards to a warranty with this? We're looking at a 10-year warranty. Okay. Standard. Yeah. I mean, that's industry standard. Yeah. But since it's LFP, it should have a much greater life expectancy. Absolutely. It's got a longer battery life cycle, too. But we're all open to like 10-year and 15-year warranty as well. Okay. What yeah. are you looking at at cycle life? You, you kind of have looking estimates. at about maybe about 35, 36 uh, cycle. Okay. Not yeah. too bad. That's yeah, right there at the 10-year. And that's before it reaches maybe 80%, 70%. That's at 100%. That range. Oh, that's 100%. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it hasn't even degraded. It hasn't even degraded yet. Wow. So that's if you brutal. go like 80%, then you're looking at probably maybe 6,500 um, life cycles. Okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. No, that's really good then. Yeah. That's um, Yeah. So you then in that math, we're looking at 10,000 cycles before we hit 70%. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. That's really good. So this is ideal for a commercial application, I guess. Inverter, is that a three-phase inverter then? That's correct. Okay. You can step it down if you get a, check a transformer, because we've installed one of these in like homes, residential, oh. large homes. Like we did a couple of installations up in Malibu. Okay. You know, houses that uh, wanted to have resiliency, right? Because right. they wanted to, you know, for the fires and the power outages. Yes. So we've installed a couple of these. I mean, with 60 kilowatt hours, you definitely, I yeah, mean, exactly. that's like, that's that's almost that's like Tesla power yeah. I mean, you'd have to buy five Tesla power walls. Yes. It's um, large homes. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you wouldn't see this on your. Um, now that thirty kilowatt inverters in got me intrigued. Can you charge the system with a generator? Absolutely. Okay, so we can do AC coupled on that. Right. Um, so you can do a backup of a backup. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean that. I mean, you really want the trifecta. You want solar. You want generator, and you want the battery. Exactly. I mean, if you get all three of those, you're you got the zombie apocalypse set up. Exactly. Trifecta. Yes. Exactly. So now I know we. Have your residential energy storage solution. This is meant more for consumers. Yep. And We're actually, um, um, you know, we've launched this already. You know, and then it starts with a five ten, uh, a five ten, so five kilowatt, ten kilowatt hour. Okay. It goes up to a ten kilowatt, twenty kilowatt hour. Wow. All right, that's pretty good. What are we looking at in regards to backup? Because I see we have an ATS and then a small critical loads panel. Um, yeah. Are we looking at 20 amps, 30 amps? 40? 20 amps. Okay. Yeah. That's not too bad. That's it's good to keep the light on, keep the refrigerator cold um, during that you gotta emergency. Get, you got to keep that cool pump running. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, yeah. For those parties, right? So, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so this is, I mean, this is available now. So we pair this with, if you see this, it's actually a Delta inverter oh, that okay. we paired with. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to have a 10-year warranty on Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Is it uh, rapid shutdown compliant? Are we going to be able we can, to? We can hook up an ATS with it. We can hook up a UPS to make it, you know, like a, a full-on backup system. Oh, okay, yeah. good, perfect. Um, anything else worth noting on that? It's available system? now. Oh, right. Right. We're in Fremont. Yeah, we're going to be checking it out then. Right. Um, and they're manufactured here in the U.S. You said Fremont, yes. so awesome. Yes. Uh, so yeah, we'll be checking it out and putting more information on our website. So if you haven't. Be sure to subscribe uh, so that way you can learn more about it. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Dale. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. We have a unique vendor here at the Solar Expo. This is Nicola, and they are currently 
uh, showcasing their UTV uh, that's electric. I mean, this is really cool. So I'm talking to Andrew Christian over at Nikola, and uh, I'm going to let him introduce himself along with a little information about the company. So yeah, thanks, Nick. Uh, Andrew Christian, I'm the Vice President of Business Development at Nikola Corporation. This is the off-highway vehicle, uh, one of the most unique, most technologically advanced off-road recreational vehicles that's out there right now. Uh, 590 horsepower. Oh wow. Four independent electric motors, okay. two integrated e axles provide essentially about 600 horsepower and 775 foot pounds of torque. All right, so you could do some rock crawling with this you if you want to. Really yeah. <laughs> now, is there a low and high gear with those different motors? Do you kind of have a little more control with that? Or? You do, and you have different settings on the vehicle in the infotainment center where you can program what type of terrain mode you want to oh, be in. Okay, so that's already built in. Is this vehicle currently available for purchase? It's not. This is a prototype. We're in our beta testing right now. We will be moving into production next year. Yeah, sorry, disregard the people that walk by, but um, so you are going into beta testing. That's pretty good. Uh, how large is the battery? Is it all underneath or is it stored a little differently? It, it is. We call this a skateboard architecture. So you okay. have a 125 kilowatt hour battery pack. Wow. So, you know, most people are familiar with the Tesla model has 100 kilowatts of battery. Right. Even bigger than that. Okay, yeah, you're getting a little bit more. So what's the range looking like? Or I don't even know if range is as relevant because you're out in the desert. So it's more like time you know how much time how much fun can you have in this in a day yeah well i mean uh, the range is relevant somewhat but it, it, it really depends on the terrain that you're navigating okay so we we advertise between 90 to 150 depending on how aggressive your driver profile is okay which that puts you kind of over there with the porsche Taycan turbo s if i'm not mistaken because i mean that got a really bad epa rating that everybody was like kind of shocked about yeah um, but it's you know, who's not going to drive that in performance mode? So, right. Uh, right. so this kind of fits in that category. Um, is there, so what's going on inside the car? If we don't mind opening, we can bring this guy closer. And, well, the first thing I should tell you is this vehicle is built to the automotive standards, not like you would see in a regular recreational vehicle. Okay. So the infotainment center itself has integrated software, and that software can be updated over the year. Uh, the, the, the so what of that is, if I want to do a horsepower increase to the vehicle, I can send that via the internet, software upgrade, add 5% more battery capacity, usable battery, and increase the horsepower. Uh, it's also one of the safest vehicles. You talked about the battery pack being on the bottom. Right. Because a lot of the weight is on the bottom, it's a low center of gravity, which means it's not prone to tipping. Right. You see that in a lot of Jeeps. They get a little too top heavy and they fall over. Right. 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 So. Like most electric vehicles, I mean, it's just a torque monster, right? You can go 0 to 60 very, 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 very fast. Two integrated e axles, four independent electric motors. You can shut down motors if you want. You could do a tank turn or you could turn the vehicle, uh, get out of a tight spot if you wanted. And then the vehicle uh, also has the ability to export it to energy density up to 15 kilowatts out the back end. Oh. So if you're in the middle of the desert, you want to watch a movie, you want to power up you know, TVs or, or watch the Super Bowl, you can do that off the energy wow. density of the vehicle. That's really cool, but that's depleting. So you bring that up. So what do you need to charge it when you're out on your you know, glamorous vacation? Sure. So you'll need a charge source for sure. Yeah, okay. You can charge off a regular generator. That might take you anywhere from six to eight hours on AC current. We're hooked up right here to the power electronics. Uh, this is a DC fast charging unit. Uh, you can go uh, different various speeds, but we can charge up to 100 kilowatts at a time on this very, very fast. And you can put all that energy back into the battery in about an hour time frame, hour, hour and a half, depending on how fast you're coming. Okay. Um, so I, what is the travel? I mean, we're, since we're in the rear end, I mean, this looks like 24 inches of travel. I mean, he should be able to see it from over there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we advertise 18 20, inches of okay. travel. Uh, but you, you can put different, various suspension modes in here, uh, but uh, it, it has the ability to navigate very, 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 a lot of different types of terrain, by the way. Is this uh, nitrogen, or, I mean, is that, are these nitrogen shocks, or? No, this is just uh, Fox's proprietary shock design suspension that's integrated into the vehicle. All right, wasn't sure if you guys were like pushing it to another level or something. So right here, what we see, is this what a consumer can expect from you know, if they if they were able to purchase this in the next coming years. Yep. The uh, this is the beta. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the prototype. But the final version, the production version of this vehicle, will be very very similar to this. And what has the demand been? The demand that you've been seeing. Do you, does Nicholas see 
uh, a market for this for off-road uh, non-highway vehicles currently? We do. We think this will be a, uh, a vehicle that uh, appeals to a lot of different people. Now it's an electric vehicle and it's in the high end of the spectrum for off-road vehicles for sure. Uh, so we're, we're obviously chasing a little bit of a different demographic. But over time, we're going to build various models of this vehicle, and the price will come down okay. uh, depending on what the consumer uh, needs are. So you said price, so that that kind of opens the door for me to ask, what do you think the starting price is going to be for this? We're targeting right between seventy thousand and seventy-five thousand. Now this is full HVAC encapsulated version. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have an off-highway vehicle that doesn't have a top, and uh, oh, okay. and uh, it, you know, start to eliminate some of those uh, you know cost uh, costly products. All right. Um, is there anything else worth really pointing out about this? I mean, it's a it's a phenomenal product. Um, I mean, this, for this being a prototype, I mean, it's really We're clean. About it. Yeah. Uh, I would just I would just add uh, and, and tell you that we think that the disruption in the market is occurring right now. We're starting to see it in, in large automotive manufacturers switching to electric. It's just a natural migration to have that in the off-road space too. So we're really excited about the future. Uh, it's zero emission product. A uh, very very capable. Uh, we're excited to see where the future goes. Yeah, I mean, and, and this will be one of the first kind of electric vehicles where people can actually tinker with. I think that I think that's going to really uh, appeal to those mechanic guys that like doing that. You know, making their suspension crazy and and really pushing vehicles to the limits. I mean, they might end up putting even bigger tires on it or something. <laughs> I don't know, but well, um, uh, there's simplistic vehicles, right? On an internal combustible engine, you have roughly 300 moving parts. Right. On a, a powertrain, it's all electric, about 30 moving parts. <laughs> so total cost of ownership, maintenance, all that will be, a, you know, a, a benefit to the consumer for sure. My now speaking of that, the the cost on on you know all those components when you're out and you're in Glamis or something, you tend to break parts. What could a consumer foresee? I mean, and that's something obviously you guys got to predict. So parts will be available to purchase, which you don't typically see with like a Tesla or something. Um, so if like they break a differential or, I mean, the, I mean, I don't know, the CTP, I guess, sure. you break the CTP. Yeah. Half shafts are a common occurrence that break on vehicles. So to your point, some of the suspension components, and uh, they have to be available. And Nicola okay. understands that. And we're, we're, we're testing these vehicles to failure and finding out what breaks. And then the parts will be ready available for the consumer. Awesome. That, and then they should be able to fix it themselves or take it, I guess, to like a service. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm stoked to see this here. Uh, definitely, un, um, definitely unexpected, I mean, to see it here. But, I mean, it's cool. I mean, I, I give you guys credit for it. And I hope to see it come to market. And I hope to get to test drive one. You know, that'd be really fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we'll, we'll have you back and we'll set something up. Awesome. Thanks, Andrew. Absolutely. Hey everyone, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. I'm speaking with Aaron at ELM. They were a utility interactive storage solution using EPC's solar or well storage inverter. So I'm gonna hand it over to Aaron. He's gonna give you a little more information since this is a little bit out of my realm because this is very great, innovative, forward-thinking technology. Thanks, Dale. Yeah. Uh, so ELM, uh, we're a company, we've been in the utility space for uh, over 20 years, and uh, we've been doing distributed energy solutions for the last 10 years. And what, what I'm standing in front of here is our ELM complete microgrid package, which features the EPC grid interactive inverter. Uh, this has a 250 kW AC coupled inverter in it, along with our full microgrid control system, which is our ELM field site microgrid controls. We've integrated up to, in this package, which is a 10 foot by uh, 10 foot by six foot wide package, we've integrated uh, up to 660 kilowatt hours 
of Samsung lithium ion storage. So 660 kilowatt hours of okay. Samsung lithium ion storage. Yes. Wow, yeah, yep. that's... Uh, with uh, 250 kW peak load capability. Wow. Uh, we can do transitions. Uh, this inverter is grin interactive and our controls are grin interactive. So not only can our controls control what's in the cabinet, but then we reach outside of the cabinet and we can control PV inverters from companies like Solar Edge, SMA, SunGrow. So wow. in an islanded situation where the grid's out, we can curtail PV. Additionally, on the other side of this container, we have everything built in that you need for uh, building integration. So we have the whole solution. So we have all your PV disconnect, your grid interconnect, uh, disconnect relay, the transformer, uh, and all the shutoffs and fuses that you need that are required for a utility interconnection. So this package is plug and play ready microgrid. Add solar. If you have generator, add your generator and add the grid and you're ready to go. All right. So what kind of solar system would typically be attached to this? I understand it's 250 kilowatts of output. Yeah. Um, Normally.